if their destroyer is actually stupid enough to leave its planet. Oh, we can build a colony ship and colonize for us a prime as well. Okay. Let's go forth. Nope, they have not built a missile base, so... There is my fleet. I don't think this is going to go too well for them somehow. Uh, we're going to pull these guys back again a little bit. Now they are sensible enough to be holding their destroyer back. are engaging. So I'll let these guys get stuck in at this point. Now this is what I mean about tech in the star bases and stuff. The star bases should be way nastier than this. For starters, it hasn't got any shields. I know they have shield cutting. If that thing was suitably upgraded to the same tech level as, for example, my fleet. I got off the ship then. Nope, I didn't. Okay. Now, we are going to bombard these piecemeal because I don't want to wipe the, co the population out. That was perfect. I didn't kill any of the po civilian population. I only blew up the structures. And I took out some marines, which means. My troop transport should be able to deal with them now. If it isn't, two definitely will be enough, but... I don't know if they ever actually left the system. We are, however, going to send our Cruiser 4 off to investigate on its own. Cruiser 4 does not have any bombs though, so... Okay, we'll come back. Is that space dragon? Two thousand. Okay, that troop ship can come on in as well. structures left. They got three personnel. Basically, they got no way of defending the planet at this point. As soon as my first troop ship gets there, it will steamroll them. So, these guys can at the point go on guard. Just blockade the planet until they get there, and then we will end the war. Skip turns until the troop ship get there. Welcome to GNN. The Sakra Brood. Battle against the Human Republic for control of the galaxy. 
That's good, actually, because they were the two leading military powers, if I remember, from the uh, State of the Galaxy report there. So if those two are fighting, awesome. And we've developed Controller, ion drives. New this is the first choice. We have to choose one attention. or the other. Now that overloads shields and disrupts controls, but we'll have far better weapons by the time we get there. Ion drives are far more interest to me at the moment because they will increase my propulsion speed. Controller, which will make new my ships developments generally require faster. your immediate. And at this point, I think I would quite like. Eureka! Um, Genius! I have moons on a lot of my planets. Orbital shipyards are very good. Make ships 20% cheaper. And that gives you plus four research. That gives plus one research per cell, though. That's no, private fund. And now, the news. Oh, hello, hello. And now, the state of the galaxy. The census rankings of empire populations. That's interesting. I just saw something else saying rumors of cloaked Antarian ships. Antares was the bad guys from Mass of Orion 2. That suggests that there might be the possibilities that the Antarans will be in the third in this game once it's finished. Welcome to GNN. More news. The human republic has grown in strength. What's the taken one from the Well they just colonized somewhere, I guess. Let's go next turn again. Even without research. me, our scientists have... Uh, let's research... Yeah, let's get genetic engineering. Just Excitement. to get that It's one of the lower techs. I like it. I like Philly. I don't like to leave gaps in the early tech. Unless it's something I specifically want to beeline for. Okay. And now... Invasion combat. And we're not going to bomb them. I'm just going to use the invade button right down there, and go... Boom. We win. We and... join with the wild spirits now. We go to sleep, to a winter without end. Oh, poor space bears. I'd say they had it coming, but they really didn't. I just started that war with them because I was stuck in a crappy corner of the galaxy. But... That is uh, the way these things go, I guess. But these guys can uh, start harvesting the gas giants. Just gives me money, basically. And Ferasa 4. I'll have automated factories. Hydroponic farms, biospheres, and yep. Let's get them back up and running because we kind of bombed their colony to dust. You see, it's already pretty heavily polluted. That's because, well, we nuked the hell out of the planet. Now, this is an awesome planet, actually. It's ultra rich. It's a swamp, but it's an ultra rich swamp. And it has gold for even more money. We will buy the automated factories immediately. And end turn. And that was the end of our little war. We'll start these guys building colonial revenue, advanced data center, atmospheric processor, toxic processor, soil enrichment, because we can. Uh, I think we're going to stick one of those guys in there. We'll put it back on balanced, actually. There we go. Okay, and that's a little mini-series for the moment. Um, 
for now. Anyway, we will come back to it probably a bit later. I'm I am going to play on with this game. Uh, I'm not going to necessarily film every bit. I might um, come back to it a little bit later on and pick this up once we've read further down the line. Um, suffice to say, the next segment of the game is going to be basically me pretty much expanding out, colonizing everywhere I can in my little section without going into these hard zones. I'll colonize all these planets probably, and that one. And build up as much as I can. Build up my fleet as best I can within, um, you know, as many resources as I can, building star bases on every colony I have. And by the time I expand to these red nodes, have the technology to get that. Um, if I go into the tech tree, good science. You will see. Uh, I believe it is. Electromagnetic refraction gives you multi-state insulators, which allows you to travel through unstable warp nodes. So... It's at least... I'd have to research one, two, three, four, five, six more techs at least, and they're pretty high-end techs at the moment before I could get that. So there's a while yet before I'm going to be getting through there. Um, what I am... Actually, what I will do before we... Uh, before I uh, draw this episode, or this very long episode, I'm sorry if you've been watching all of these, this is probably going to be several videos I'm going to break this down into. Um, let's just go fight this space monster first, just so you can see how uh, space monsters work. Should have more than enough power to deal with them at this point. If I lose some ships at this point, I'm not too worried, because it'll just reduce my overheads. Well, it won't, but... Uh, I can build the ships back, and I'm not being threatened by any other races. And I'm actually pretty safe, because I'm pretty sure that I'm probably ahead of the curve technologically. And if any other race is close to me tech-wise, they're still going to be, unless they're way ahead of me, which I highly doubt, in the Cylons are the fastest researchers. Um, unless they're miles ahead of me, they're not going to have the tech to cross these points before I am. Certainly not before I can build my fleet back up. So I'm pretty confident in taking on the space monster, even if I lose a bunch of ships. Center, Neutron Collider, and then a Starbase, I think. Don't like that system. This system's a problem. Because you can't... well... eventually... Good science takes time! What do I need to build? Planetology... Artificial. I might actually beeline that tech. Ooh, terraform is a good one as well. As is heightened intelligence. Yep, I'm gonna beeline planetology. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, because then I can start turning gas giants and asteroids into habitable planets. They're crap, barren planets, but it'll allow me to colonize that system for starters. Uh, and I've got, as you may have noticed, quite a few asteroids and gas giants floating around. In fact, I've got, you know, suddenly that's a four-planet system. Okay, oh, you may notice I researched that one now because this is the other thing, it's an abundance. That's actually not great. Normally planets you get um, guided by space monsters are really nice planets. It's that's that's a nice planet, but it's not Controller, an amazing new one. developments now, require again, your immediate attention. Here's another one which is a choice. You can choose either telepathic training, which gives you a spying bonus, or microbiotics, which gives you a growth bonus across your empire. 
Now, at the moment, as Nerf said many times, spies are not implemented in the game yet, so there is absolutely no point in taking telepathic training. So, microbiotics it is. Even without me! And we're gonna go straight for... We could go... Well, we need both of those, but I think we actually want to go for genetic mutations first. Let's go fight the Space Dragon. Here comes our fleet. Rawr, Space Dragon. Rawr! It's a big Space Dragon. Now let's try something else as well because... Oh, hello. He's firing. Whoa! battered his shields down quickly. Let's turn on cinematic camera. Which is kind of cool. Blew the hell out of that cruiser. We might lose a cruiser here. Come on guys, take him out quickly. He fires again and beats the cruiser. No! He's going down, obviously. Damn, this guy packs a wallop. We beat him, but that was costly. That was a cruiser he took out. Dragon Breath. Hits like a truck, apparently. However, Space Monster defeated. Right, guys, that is where I'm going to leave it here. That is a little taster of what Master of Orion is about. Um, that was a bit of a long one, and if anyone stuck with this for the whole uh, marathon session, well done to you. Uh, you are made of sterner stuff than I. Uh, that should, I would hope, give you an impression of whether this is something that is for you or not. Honestly, if... If you like Civ, or 4X games in general, this is a return of the greatest series of all time, for that game type in my opinion. And it is one hell of a return to form. This, as noted, it's early access. I've highlighted a few things that are missing at the moment. Um, they're only going to get better in time. It's... It really isn't a... It's not a question of whether I think this is a good game. The game is a fantastic game, and I strongly recommend it to anyone. What I would say is, before you buy into it, consider whether you really want to buy into it now, at early access point, or whether this is something that you're happy to wait a few months for and buy when it's actually finished. I, being the paragon of patience that most of you know me for, obviously wanted Master of Orion, and I wanted it now. Uh, even in its unfinished state. Even in its unfinished state, this is only a gnat's, a, a gnat's breath shy of being better than Master of Orion 2, in my opinion. And that... Master of Orion 2 is an old game, and it has flaws that have been corrected in a lot of games since. But, overall, Master of Orion 2 just has that charm that no other game, not even Civ for me, has matched. And this has that. It has that in spades. It has the charm, it has the depth, it has the strategy, and it has that sort of element that no two games are alike. As noted, that whole war with the um, Bulrathi. I've never had a start to a game like this. This, this, that was new. I've hugely enjoyed that. And I, I thought I'd lost. I genuinely thought, when I cocked that up there, I thought I'd overextended myself, and I thought I'd lost the war. I thought they were going to push back and wipe me out. But no, I fought back and held my own. So... Yeah. Massive Ryan, guys. I hope you've enjoyed that as much as I enjoyed playing it. Uh, I'm going to carry on with this playthrough. Uh, probably not tonight, because... Uh, well, I've got to work in the morning, and there's only so many hours in the day, and... 
what time is it anyway? Oh, blimey. That took rather longer than I expected it to. So I'm going to call this here. Uh, if you did enjoy any of that, um, again, you are clearly a sadist. <laughs> but uh, stick with it, and by all means, like and subscribe and all that good stuff. Um, Master Ryan, uh, you can grab a copy on Steam at the moment if you are interested. It's, as I said, it's around, I think it's... £30 at the moment for the collector's edition which gets you early access and gets you also for your money copies of Master of Ryan 1, 2 and unfortunately Master of Ryan 3 but you don't have to worry about that just trust me and don't play Master of Ryan 3 just if you really want to see how bad it was have a look but don't play that one first and if you never played the original two if you were one of those I'm sure there must be some unfortunate people out there who never played Master Round 1 and 2, uh, heard their friends talking about how great it was, and saw Master Round 3 on the shelf, and bought it to see what all the fuss was about, and had a go of it, and then thought their friends were idiots, and never tried any of the others. If you are someone who has only seen Master Round 3, try Masters of Orion 2. Just just try my mood to you. Just go on. And try this. But yeah, that'll do for now. See you guys next time. Cheers! <laughs>